morning. Welcome to Morning Prayer with St. John's Episcopal Church in Bangor, Maine. Today, the church remembers Benedict of Nursia, abbot of Monte Cassino in the 6th century AD. The serious breakdown of society and authority in 5th century Europe led many to run away from society and hide as hermits, despairing of humanity. Benedict of Nursia instead entered on a brave new venture. At Subiaco and later at Monte Cassino, both in Italy, he founded the first monastic communities of Western Europe. Benedict drafted a firm but reasonable rule for these communities. He was never ordained, and his communities were at first composed only of laymen, their lives centered around the daily offices. When they were not praying and studying scripture, they were engaged in manual labor and in works of charity. Like the early Christians, they held all property in common. Uh, central to Benedict's rule was hospitality to guests. Although Benedict attracted little attention in his own lifetime, after his death, as the monasteries grew and spread, so did his fame. The Benedictine monasteries became little islands where a man could learn to love God and his fellow man and truly practice the Christian religion his whole life. These communities operated schools, orphanages, and hospitals, and assumed many of the functions of state. Benedictine monks were largely responsible for the conversion and civilization of England. Uh, Westminster Abbey was for centuries a Benedictine house. So let us begin in morning prayer right two on page 78 and quickly moving to page 80. Thus says the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place and also with the one who has a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite. Page 80, Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Let us now turn to page 82 and say together the Venite. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The Psalms. <clears throat> this morning we will read Psalms 5 and 6, starting on page 588, full verse responsibly. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Hearken to my cry for help, my God and my King. For I make my prayer to you. In the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. Early in the morning, I make my appeal and watch for you. For you are not a God who takes pleasure in wickedness, and evil cannot dwell with you. Braggarts cannot stand in your sight. You hate all those who work wickedness. You destroy those who speak lies. The bloodthirsty and deceitful, O oh Lord, you abhor. But as for me, through the greatness of your mercy, I will go into your house. I will bow down toward your holy temple in awe of you. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness, because of those who lie in wait for me. Make your way straight before me. For there is no truth in their mouth. There is destruction in their heart. Their throat is an open grave. They flatter with their tongue. Declare them guilty, O God. 
let them fall because of their schemes. Because of their many transgressions, cast them out, for they have rebelled against you. But all who take refuge in, refuge in you will be glad. They will sing out their joy forever. You will shelter them so that those who love your name may exalt in you. For you, O oh Lord, will bless the righteous. You will defend them with your fav favor. You will defend them with your favor as with a shield. Okay, Psalm 6. Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger. Do not punish me in your wrath. Have pity on me, Lord, for I am weak. Heal me, Lord, for my bones are racked. My spirit shakes with terror. How long, O oh Lord, how long? Turn, O oh Lord, and deliver me. Save me for your mercy's sake. For in death, no one remembers you. And who will give you thanks in the grave? I grow weary because of my groaning. Every night I drench my bed and flood my couch with tears. My eyes are wasted with grief and worn away because of all my enemies. Depart from me, all evildoers, for the Lord has heard the sound of my weeping. The Lord has heard my supplication. The Lord accepts my prayer. All my enemies shall be confounded and quake with fear. They shall turn back and suddenly be put to shame. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and your words because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Now, therefore, I pray, pardon my sin and return with me so that I may worship the Lord. Samuel said to Saul, I will not return with you, for you have rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord has rejected you from being king over Israel. As Samuel turned to go away, Saul caught hold of the hem of his robe, and it tore. And Samuel said to him, the Lord has torn the kingdom of Israel from you this very day and has given it to a neighbor of yours who is better than you. Moreover, the glory of Israel will not recant or change his mind. For he is not a mortal that he should change his mind. And Saul said, I have sinned, yet honor me now before the elders of my people and before Israel and return with me, so that I may worship the Lord your God. So Samuel turned back after Saul, and Saul worshiped the Lord. Then Samuel said, bring Agag, the king of the Amalekites, here to me. And Agag came to him haltingly. Agag said, surely this is the bitterness of death. But Samuel said, as your sword has made women childless, so your mother shall be childless among women. And Samuel hewed Agag in pieces before the Lord in Gilgal. Then Samuel went to Ramah, and Saul went up to his house in Gibeah of Saul. Samuel did not see Saul again until the day of his death. But Samuel grieved over Saul, and the Lord was sorry that he had made Saul king over Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now the first canticle. Turning to page 90, let us say together a song of praise, canticle 13. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple, on the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you beholding the depths, in the high vault of heaven, glory to you. Glory to you, 
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Second lesson is from the Acts of the Apostles. Now, as Peter went here and there among all the believers, he came down also to the saints living in Lydda. There he found a man named Aeneas, who had been bedridden for eight years, for he was paralyzed. Peter said to him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ heals you. Get up and make your bed. And immediately he got up. And all the residents of Lydda and Sharon saw him and turned to the Lord. Now in Joppa, there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time, she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples who heard that Peter was there sent two men to him with the request, please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them. And when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside, and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then, calling the saints and the widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, he stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon, a tanner, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second canticle. Turning to page 93, let us say Canticle 18, A Song to the Lamb. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God, for you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain, for with your blood you have redeemed for God from every family, language, people, and nation a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor forever and forevermore. A reading from the Gospel according to Luke. On the Sabbath, they rested according to the commandment. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now let us turn to page 96 and affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins 
the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty and everlasting God, your precepts are the wisdom of a loving Father. Give us grace, following the teaching and example of your servant, Benedict to walk with loving and willing hearts in the school of the Lord's service. Let your ears be open to our prayers and prosper with your blessing the work of our hands through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O oh God, you have taught us to keep all your commandments by loving you and our neighbor. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart and united to one another with pure affection through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now as we pray for the needs of the church and the world, I bid your own intercessions, petitions, or thanksgivings. We pray for the church, for our Anglican communion and Justin Archbishop of Canterbury, for the Diocese of Utah, for our Episcopal Church and Michael, our presiding bishop, for our Diocese of Maine and Thomas, our Bishop, for the Congregation of St. Cuthbert's, McMahon Island, for all victims of war, for our parish of St. John's, our priest James, and for all our people. We pray for the sick, injured, or distressed, for Trish, Evie, Terry, and Angela. We offer continued prayers for Barbara, Olivia, Zara, Bruce, Brian, Sarah, Ross, Jenny, Rosemary, Marlin, James, and Pion. And we pray for a holy death for Gail. We pray for our homebound members, including Robert, Krista, Lily, Erlene, and Eileen. We pray for the world, for peace and goodwill among nations, even in places of violence or oppression, and for the many places in our world where there is danger and desperation for refugees, immigrants, and those who are displaced, especially for children, for all who suffer for conscience's sake, for our enemies and those who wish us harm, for all suffering effects of climate change and of natural disasters, that the peoples of all nations will find ways to cooperate with God's earth in mitigating the climate crisis, that countries beset by any calamity, whether natural or man-made, may not be forced to compete for the attention of more fortunate nations, <laughs> and that all people come to understand that the best solution for conflict, whether far or near, 
is to first love our neighbors as ourselves. And we offer this prayer for Ukraine. God of mercy, we pray for Ukraine, for all of humanity distorted by war, for all the lives lost, homes seized, and peace broken. May the spirit of comfort and compassion envelop all who dwell in fear. May the spirit of wisdom and humility enliven our global leaders. May we affirm the dignity and rights of all. May we seek peace. Amen. We pray for our own nation, for all who live with the daily threat and effects of gun violence, for the healing of divisions and the celebration of diversity, for the recognition that no single viewpoint on any issue, no matter how important, is without human error, for all who suffer from injustice, for eyes to see injustice, and for the will to work for fairness for all of God's people, and for all who struggle to change our world and its systems of oppression and exploitation. We pray for the leaders of our country, state, and community, for Joseph, our president, members of Congress, especially Susan, Angus, Shelley, and Jared of Maine, for Janet, our governor, and Rick, our mayor, and for those responsible for administering justice in the courts of this land, that they all may serve our nation and the world with wisdom, civility, and compassion. We pray for our military personnel, especially those of this parish, Sarah, Dylan, Joshua, and Timothy. We offer prayers of thanksgiving for the lives of those celebrating birthdays during this week, including Kevin, David, and Pat. We pray for the departed, for victims of the war in Ukraine and the fighting in Sudan, for the many victims of gun violence in this country, and for all who mourn for them. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now let us turn to page 101 and say the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts you may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And now let us say a prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord, to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning. We hope uh, you have a blessed day and that we will see you again tomorrow morning at nine.